Hello, friends. I apologize for uh, being a little bit disheveled here. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, woo. I have been running myself ragged. And for many of you who have followed me in the channel before, you know I used to run marathons. I used to do a lot of training for triathlons. And fortunately, I'm in pretty good shape because I've been running all over the country and running all over the world in order to get access to the best information so that you can go out there and make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. But needless to say, I just left the Fed meeting. And while I suspect this video will probably come out after they release minutes from that meeting, I've got the inside scoop because I was there. Because it's totally possible that I could physically run from Boynton Beach, Florida to the meeting, but then also to Russia to meet with Putin and get the most actionable, relevant information inside what he's thinking so that I can share it with you and we can all be empowered by that real-time inside information. And if you actually believe that, then I've got a bridge in Margate that I'd like to sell you. But I hope you got a good laugh because I know I had a lot of fun playing this game. Let's get right into it now. And as I shared in yesterday's video, the Fed has been meeting for the last two days and very shortly they will announce what they intend to do as far as the Fed funds rate. And while I've already done a deep dive as to what that will look like in terms of inflation and potential economic impact, I'm not going to rehash the same thing that I did yesterday because that's yesterday's news. But what I must share is that Redfin has confirmed that sellers have lost the upper hand. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I've been talking about these shifting dynamics and the fact that sellers have been losing leverage for quite some time now. So if you're new, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and know that I truly appreciate your participation in my journey. And if you're a returning viewer, well, then I don't care about you at all. <laughs> I'm obviously kidding. I love you all. Let's get right into it. And as you can see, Redfin just reported that sellers lose the upper hand as mortgage rates top 6%. Well, we blew past 6%. And although the housing market here in my market is returning to a more normalized balance similar to 2019, it's coming at a great cost to both buyers and sellers because buyers are footing the bill of higher mortgage payments and they're struggling with affordability issues. And sellers are too because the demand for their homes has dropped significantly. Now, full disclosure, we still set records on the right homes priced the right way and buyers are still buying and homes are still selling, but overall the trend is not our friend. I can tell you from meeting with the Federal Reserve on my run this morning and with Putin on my run this morning, the trend is not our friend. In yesterday's video, which I will share at the end of this video so that you can check it out, I mentioned that new housing data would be released and here's what it says. Existing home sales fell significantly in August and prices have softened significantly. Yeah, no kidding. I've been talking about that for months, and if you've been watching, you know I've been sharing about that. Now, although the MLS has not released August numbers as of yet, I've got access to them, and I'm gonna share exactly what they are momentarily. So please stick around because I will get granular very soon. But the data I was looking to see from yesterday related to home builders, I want to intentionally be brief and right to the point. So I'm not going to do a deep dive into what those numbers are, but what I will share is home builders actually experienced a small bump to the upside as it relates to single family housing starts in August. But building permits, which are a leading indicator and an indicator of future construction, well, those fell and the expectation was that they would rise. And while I promise to be brief and to the point and not do a granular deep dive into what the housing starts looked like, I will give you a big picture overview. And in August, housing starts surged 12.2%, but that was mainly due to multifamily. But to break that down in layman's term, and I've highlighted it on the screen, single family home starts rose to 3.4% last month, which is down from last year, but multifamily, meaning apartments and condos, surged 28%. And why would that be? Thanks for asking. I'll tell you. It's so that whoever owns those apartments 
for condos or multiplexes can max out rent, capitalize on inflation, and make some cash green dividends, which might be great for their business, but it's certainly not great for the consumer. And if you're renting, you are vulnerable to inflation and exponential increases in rent. I'm sure I'm not going to be the first one to say that that sucks, but it is what it is. And if you are renting and you're thinking about buying, then please reach out to me immediately. Let's have a conversation and do a deep financial analysis as to whether it makes sense for you to buy. And again, no sales pressure. I'm not looking to talk anybody into doing anything that is not right for them. But if you haven't analyzed your finances and there's some uncertainty as to whether renting or buying makes more sense, then a conversation is a very good place to start. Now, I can see in the analytics that most people who watch this content are not local in my market, which is perfectly fine. My intent is to create valuable information that empowers everyone, no matter where you are, to go out there and make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. But please understand that we can serve and support you at the highest level, no matter where you are. So if you're even thinking about moving ever, please reach out, opt in for a referral. We'll connect you with someone that we know, like, and trust that can serve and support you at the highest level, irrespective of market conditions or irrespective of geographic location. And we'll get you set up right away. Now, obviously, I recognize that we are in September and we're looking at August numbers. But those August numbers have not been reported by the MLS as of yet. But you know I'm going to be tracking those numbers. But here's what they look like in my hyper-local neighborhood, in the zip code in which I live. So keep in mind, these dynamics will not be the same everywhere. And your market is very likely different than mine. But here's what August looked like in Boynton Beach, in my zip code. And again, it's a year over year comparison. So I'm looking at August 2022 versus August 21. And you can see there was almost a 41% decrease in closed sales, a 21% increase in average sales price, a decrease of almost 32% in closed sales, a decrease of almost 32% in pending sales, a massive spike in new listings, almost 36% more inventory, more homes for sale, which means if you're thinking about selling, you got way more competition. And if you're thinking about buying, you have way more options and far more negotiating power. But here's where the numbers become exponential. And bear in mind, we are looking back a month. So the month we're in right now is significantly worse than August. But the active inventory of homes for sale, meaning your competition, if you're thinking about selling, is up 333%. And the month's supply of inventory, which is the best barometer as to whether we're in a buyer or a seller's market, is up 675%, which to be clear, is still a seller's market, but we're very close to a neutral market as of last month. And this month, I would not be shocked to see either a neutral or buyer's market which to be clear is neither good or bad. It just is what it is. Now I'm going to go back to Redfin because I read your comments and there are plenty of comments that state that nobody's moving to Florida anymore. And if you believe that, then please tell me where to send the ambulance or maybe I should call it the ambulance. But nonetheless, buyers want to max out living in South Florida to the fullest and they're still coming in droves. And the top 10 inbound metros you can see in the chart. And no surprise to me or really anybody that lives in South Florida, New York, New York, the number one inbound metro. But Los Angeles, Philly, San Jose, Hotlanta, and Seattle are all on the list because people want to max out the freedom that exists in Florida. And we want to help as many people as we can. So if you happen to live in any of these inbound metros or really any other place in the world and you want to learn more about what living in South Florida is actually like, please check out the playlists. I've done tons of content, immersive tours, showing exactly what it's like to live in most cities and most subdivisions that exist here in South Florida. Please opt in for our free city slash relocation guide, which is going to tell you everything that you need to know about every city in South Florida.
And you can opt in by clicking the link down below or in the comments section, and we will send you one right away. And most importantly, if you're interested in learning more about what the housing dynamics are right now in today's market, you want to learn about the economic crisis that is absolutely impacting the real estate market, then please check out my next two videos because I suspect you will love them a lot. And if you're even thinking about moving to or living in South Florida, you've got to give me a call, text, email, send a carrier pigeon, a smoke signal, by any means necessary. Because we've got your back when it comes to moving to or living in South Florida. And until next time.